Are you a little bit bummed out that E3 isn't happening this year? Well, enter Jeff Keighley because he is coming through clutch for a lot of us. Summer Game Festival 2020 has stepped in to fill E3 void for video games, and wow, this is what the future of video game conventions and things of that nature might be because what he's doing, teaming up with a lot of big name publishers and developers, offering a way for them to get their information out, offering playable demos on Xbox and Steam. We don't know if they're going to be playable demos on PlayStation. I would imagine that they're going to try to work that out. But nonetheless, this is incredibly exciting. I'm going to take a look at that, and I'm also going to look at some new PS4 game reveals in just a little bit. But as noted on Variety, after the video game industry's major E3 event was nixed because of the crisis, a new multi-month event has stepped forward to provide an outlet for news, demos, and free playable content. The Summer Game Fest is a four-month series of global events to highlight video games. The season will run from May. May to August 2020 and feature updates from the following video game publishers and platforms. And this is what has just been announced thus far. There are going to be other developers and publishers that also enter the fray. 2K, Activision, Bandai Namco Entertainment, Bethesda, Blizzard Entertainment, Bungie, CD Projekt Red, Digital Extremes, Electronic Arts, Microsoft Xbox, Private Division, Riot Games, Sony Interactive Entertainment, Steam, Square Enix, and Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment. So right away, those are a lot of heavy hitters and Jeff Keighley did note on Twitter that this is just the lineup of phase one. There's going to be multiple phases, so expect a lot of other developers and publishers to come forward and enter this as well. This is making the best out of a really, really bad situation because a lot of developers and publishers use E3 as a platform to really generate a lot of buzz about their games. Doing your own event, yes, that can work for some people. That can work in the sense that if your game was going to be hotly anticipated anyway, you just dropping a trailer out of nowhere, that's going to work for some people. Look at what happened with Assassin's Creed Valhalla. That game is seemingly everywhere. However, I feel like having a dedicated event, a dedicated uh, series of events in this case, it's going to be a couple months long, which is definitely a shift from E3, but that also gives developers an opportunity to take the time they need and slowly roll things out. Because right now, the work from home nature of the development studios, that is going to allow them to develop games, but it's obviously an alteration of how quickly games are progressing. So something like this, I feel like is very advantageous for them to have a few months to roll everything out. Obviously, if you just look at the Phase 1 lineup, you've got a lot of heavy hitters, but there are notable studios that are left out here. But considering you have Sony, considering you have Microsoft, Steam, Valve dropping new games, that could be very, very exciting. We just got Half-Life Alex. Maybe we can see a PlayStation VR port at some point. Activision is there. Could we hear about a new Crash Bandicoot game? Bandai Namco, where's my Elden Ring? Where's my Tales of Arise update? I've been waiting on those games for quite a while. Come on, Bandai. I imagine that E3 was ultimately going to be the venue where they were going to give us those updates on those games because Bandai Namco typically has a big presence at E3. Bethesda also always has a big presence at E3, going as far as to holding their own conference the last few years, even though Bethesda isn't in everyone's good graces right now. I think people are interested to see... How is Starfield looking like? That's a game that was announced a few years ago and we still have heard nothing about it. I thought it was a really poor idea to announce that game with just a CG trailer well before it was actually ready. And then I thought they made a similar mistake following that up with the Elder Scrolls 6 reveal trailer, which we know that we're not going to play until like 2023, 2024. So waiting that long is just a bummer. Nonetheless, with Private Division there as well, and all of these studios, EA, CD Projekt Red, that probably means we're going to get some sort of Cyberpunk 2077 update. As far as CD Projekt Red can do, they might even announce Cyberpunk 2077 on this Switch. Okay, I won't go that far. Maybe sooner rather than later that will happen. They can work with Saber Interactive, and we know that they're absolute wizards on this kind of stuff, but this is really great. And also, the article on Variety continued, the virtual event is the brainchild of industry veteran Jeff Keighley, the creator of the game who had attended every E3 since the first one in 95, but even before E3 nixed the plans because of the outbreak, he had announced he would not participate in this year's show because he opinion in-person events don't serve fans or game publishers as well as an online event, which makes all the sense in the world. E3 at this point is a little bit dated because we do have things online. You can serve digital content and that's going to be a lot better received, especially if you can directly offer demos to consumers. You're letting people play these demos anyway. Why not let everybody play the demos? It's just a way more effective effective way to market your games and yes i get that there is an appeal to e3 having that big event it feels like a blockbuster occasion 
However, in terms of just marketing your game, letting people play the game and letting the word of mouth spread, I think offering digital demos is a way better idea. And you're saving a lot of resources. You're not having to travel to big events and you're not having to hold big conferences. I think big conferences have a time and a place, but I think this is a lot more effective of in a way to roll out that E3 style of an event. He noted, when you think about it, the idea of consumers waiting in line to play a game at a booth is antiquated, especially with digital di distribution. Keeley commented, in these uncertain and challenging times, it's more important than ever that video games serve as a common and virtual connection point between all of us. SGF is an organizing principle that promises fans a whole season of video game news and other surprises from the comfort of their home. For the Summer Game Fest, specific event details will be shared by each game publisher with additional publishers set to be announced in the coming weeks. As a part of the event series, game platforms including Steam and Xbox will offer fans the access to playable limited time demonstration and trials of select game content. The Steam Game Festival is also happening, Summer Edition, that'll be running June 9th to the 14th with other platform dates to be announced. Programming that is a part of Summer Game Fest will be distributed across all major streaming platforms including publisher-owned and operated channels on Facebook, Mixer, Twitch, Twitter, as well as YouTube. Keeley will host a special pre and post show for flagship publisher events and partner with I Am 8-Bit who was a creative director for E3. To produce showcase highlighting upcoming games, in addition, on August 24th, Keeley will host and produce Gamescom opening night live, which he's billed as a finale to the SGF season. More info on the series will be available at SummerGameFest.com. You can watch the video announcement for the Summer Game Fest right now. So happy something like this is happening. Not only is it giving developers time to actually promote their games and giving them an opportunity, it's also just going to bring everybody together in a time of uncertainty, which I think is the main point that is being get, uh, gotten across here it's really awesome that this is happening and uh keely also noted much more news will be coming soon about my plans for the summer an entirely new way for us to gather and celebrate gaming in these uncertain times that was tweeted out back in april 13th on april 13th i should say so obviously he had this uh, brainchild going for quite a while he even noted a long time ago uh that's why he opted out of e3 he wanted a different way to allow people to play these games and they actually did the steam game festival i think late last year and that was kind of a harbinger of things to come but now they're going full-blown i imagine the uh, the world's current state expedited these process however it's just fantastic to see something like this coming to fruition and a lot more news is going to be coming out he also noted on Twitter, there are so many amazing Summer Game Fest uh, events planned. The schedule launches soon on the website, and next Thursday, Xbox will have a special Inside Xbox episode at 11 a.m., 8 a.m. Pacific time with Xbox Series X gameplay, and he's answering a lot of questions right now, so a lot of information is rolling out. Great to see. I'll keep you guys locked with information about this. Hopefully, Sony's on board with the playable demos and things of that nature, because if it was just on Xbox and uh, PC on Steam, that would be a really big bummer, and if Sony couldn't work something out with Jeff Keighley to make that happen and the publishers again that's a gigantic bummer especially because Sony's already on board with a phase one they're gonna be a part of the summer game fest so I would imagine things could be worked out but we'll wait and see how that turns out all right moving on from that I do want to highlight a couple of things Pistol Whip is coming to PSVR this summer become a rhythm action hero in Cloudhead Games is toe tapping VR sensation you know how in action movie trailers they sync all the gunfire and fisticuff sounds to match up with the music that's what it feels like to play Pistol Whip our first of its kind action rhythm FPS for PSVR Love these zany uh, music rhythm games that are coming out combining different features. I love Beat Saber. I love a lot of the other music rhythm games. I'm getting super into DJ Max right now as well. That game is just addicting as all hell. In this game, you'll become the hero of your own action movie scenes with handcrafted enemy engagements and environments synchronized to a breakneck soundtrack. Since we launched on PC late last year, Pistol Whip has rocketed to become one of the highest rated VR games available, even becoming recipient of Immersive Reality Game of the Year at the 2020 DICE Awards where extremely excited to bring Pistol Whip to the PSVR family at long last this summer so you can become the ultimate action hero. Very good look and stylization to this game as well. If you don't have PlayStation VR yet and you're interested, well, look at the game library. It is starting to have a lot of depth and the announcement of a Half-Life Alex coming to PSVR. I think that would be a system seller for a lot of people. And it seems like Valve is open to putting that game on as many platforms as they can. They didn't just put it out as a way to sell Valve Index. Otherwise, it would have been exclusive to Valve Index. And hopefully that game ultimately comes to the PS4 as well. But Pistol Whip, we know that'll be dropping this summer. Looks like a very cool game. Lastly, I do want to note that Made of Skr launches in June for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. October for Switch. This is a survival horror title steeped in Welsh folklore. Made of Skr draws players back to 1898 to adventure through the notorious macabre Hotel Skr with multiple ways for your stay. This is a 
3D sound-based AI system as the core survival mechanic for its survival gameplay, a chilling story inspired by Welsh folklore fusing psychological gothic and British horror, realistic visuals featuring 4K uncapped on PC and enhancements on PS4 and Xbox One X, and a pretty cool look to this game as well if you're looking for a horror title. Gonna be one to keep an eye on, again, it will be dropping in June. And that's gonna conclude this video. Again, the Summer Game Festival sounds absolutely awesome. This is gonna be something to definitely keep your eyes on. Lineup for Phase 1 already looks incredibly stacked, so that's gonna be great to see. Pistol Whip comes to the PSVR this summer, and Made of Scourge drops on PS4 this June. That's gonna conclude this video. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.